I ordered a bunch of trees from Stark the other day. They had a sale going on since their ship dates are all throughout the summer and not all at once. I decided to go ahead and order a bunch of trees just so I had it off my mind. And then we will get them every few weeks throughout the summer and we can just plant them as we go. The first shipment has the maple trees, so we're going to dig 10 holes since we have the auger and make it really easy on ourselves to get these trees in um, this week. Half the poles are set, not half. Six out of 18, that's a third. It's looking good and it's going faster than I thought. They're just sitting in the holes. We haven't plumbed and leveled them and scooched them into place yet. That'll be a little bit tedious, but it'll be better. Less manual work, I think. But I've never built a pole barn before, so who knows? Looks pretty Mobile. good. Looks good, go ahead and drive it. Okay, bubble looks good, line looks good. Yeah, that's where we're right there. <laughs> Mini breaks, very hot day. Last screw, you ready? You're so sunburned. You're so red. Okay. Look at that. Nice. Can I go to bed now? High five. No, you gotta go put something on your skin. Something. I did yeah, before you need some aloe, okay. dude. Aloe, I wonder if you have any. Something. Good job, guys. Well, we set the poles. Today was a very hard day. But it looks like there's going to be a building here. It's a little hard to believe when there was just holes in the ground or we had moved a lot of mud and dirt. But I turned around today and I saw several poles in the ground and it kind of startled me like, oh, there's something there. So exciting. So we're nowhere near done. There's a lot left to do. But this is a major step today. We have an inspection tomorrow. And uh, if I get a green light, we're going to move forward. I have to order trusses. Um, the companies that make them take longer than I thought, so we may still be about five weeks out before we can set the trusses and put the roof on, but we're going to get as far as we can. This is exciting. So, I haven't mentioned my asparagus in a while, but I am very excited to announce that it survived. Almost every single one, I believe, survived. And it's already got grown up enough to go to seed. This last week at the farmer's market, we got two more rhubarb plants. So here's our first one given to us by our neighbor as a welcome welcome to the neighborhood. And then this one and this one are new from the farmer's market. So that was kind of cool. Somebody um, dug them up from their backyard and potted them and selling them. So 
that means they grow up here. And so I'm excited next year to have lots of rhubarb. I'm right next to our strawberry patch. That's right. I'm hoping they'll have more this week. They only had two this week. Um, actually would buy more and put in a whole patch of them. Some people say they just put in a couple plants and then a couple years they're like these gigantic um, bushes basically. So maybe that's enough. But um, we learned that we like strawberry rhubarb pie or strawberry rhubarb crisp or <laughs> whatever. So we're excited for that and excited the asparagus are growing. And I just love the wildflowers out here. I'm kind of sad because we're rotationally grazing the animals and when you put them in a patch it turns completely desolate and all the flowers and the grass goes away. I think it's really pretty. I love the twilight. Looks like we might get a little rain tonight. It's a beautiful evening. Do a little gardening. It was so hot today. So do a little gardening in the evening to kind of get out of the heat. It's good. It's really beautiful here. Okay, so we've had this cow for a few days now, and um, she's big. I, you know, I was excited to get a cow smaller than the brown Swiss that I saw, but she's still really big and um, definitely more manageable. Except I think she has a little bit of an attitude. Um, <clears throat> I was in there feeding her some apple the other day. I mean. Like I said, we've only had her for a couple days, but I was in there feeding her an apple and when I was done, she kind of seemed to be pushing me and kind of shaking her head at me and I got kind of scared and I was trying to just calmly walk away from her and she kind of followed me and kind of pushed at me and so I got really scared and we've tried to milk her a couple times. She's pretty kicky and um, so I'm feeling really scared of her, so we're going to keep trying. Obviously, we want to keep trying to milk her and keep teaching her, but we're so new at this that we don't know what we're doing, and um, I feel like, I don't know, um, I'm just nervous. I'm really nervous. I, I don't want to get hurt, and I don't want anybody to get hurt. Um, she's a strong kick, and I can't remember if we videoed the first milking, but she basically broke the the uh, swing bar. So I'm just a little afraid of her strong kick. And we're trying to scour the internet for what to do with a kicky milk cow. She is young. She has not um, done a lot of milking. And this is her first baby. And the baby was only born May 3rd. So whoever had her before us um, milked her but she was brand new and, and I'm wondering if it was because she was so kicky that they got rid of her. They said it was because uh, the milk was A1, A2, not A2, A2. And, but I wonder if it's because she's just new and she's kicky. So we'll see, but uh, we'll try it again. Do you wanna walk her? Nope. Good morning, Briar. Hi, how are you today? Brush your mouth. Good girl, Brian. Good girl. Good girl. Can you try two at a time? I can't reach. You can't reach. Mm -hmm. Not close enough in there. Good girl. We kind of didn't get out in time. Almost a half gallon, I think, here. We would have had a half gallon if she wouldn't have uh, pooped in it. camera. Oh, yeah. Hey, there's a cup. I honestly yeah, I called out the cup cam. Cup cam. I told you. He's blinking, right? Yeah. You gotta turn off the blinky red. I wonder if you can do that. 